All right, I'm going to do the examples from the investment problems. I remember the investment problems is where somebody's taking a chunk of money and they're investing it in uh, multiple uh, avenues, stocks and bonds, could be uh, two different types of savings accounts, whatever. But to, in order to figure out what their return is, uh, we're going to use this simple interest formula, I equals PRT. I is interest, P is principal, rate, R is rate, time is T is time. Now, what's going to be interesting is that all of these deal with annual, so that means one year, and our, they don't always call it interest. Um, the keywords that mean interest is total annual return on investments or annual interest, and I think I've also seen return income. Um, yeah, those are a couple different ways I've heard that said. All right, so let's get into the first one. Now, off of your sheet with all the examples on it, this was number 10. And these are lengthy to write because of the fact that um, there's a lot of background information they have to give you. So it says, Kathy invested twice as much money in bonds paying 9% a year as she did in stocks paying 6% a year. Her total annual return, that's uh, aka interest, on these investments was 1680 so $1,680. How much did she invest in stocks and in bonds? So we're going to have to answer two questions, and when we finalize our answer, we're going to have to make sure we distinguish one from the other. <clears throat> so again, because we have so many things we're dealing with, we're dealing with a formula. Um, best way to use this problem is to have a chart. So we've got stocks. We've got bonds. We're going to add another column called total. Now, we don't always get to put things in the total column, but when we do we get an equation. <coughs> so on this one we're going to write the formula P, that's the amount invested, R, that's the rate, T, that's the time, and that's going to equal interest. So again, we're going to multiply these columns together to equal the last column. Alright, so stocks. Uh, let's see, stocks, we were told 6% which is 0 0.06. Now this is annual, so that can go in there. That 0 0.06 doesn't look very good. Let's try that again. And it says that she invested twice as much money in bonds than she did in stocks. So what we can do is, since stocks is mentioned last, we'll let him be X. So the interest earned from the stocks is 0 0.06 times X. Now, for the bonds, they're at 9%, which is 0 0.09, and she's got twice as much money invested, so that would be 2x. So we're going to get 0 0.09 times 2x. And then it says the total annual return, which is a fancy word of saying interest, Um, was $1,680. So to solve this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and create equation. And the equation looks like this. 
the amount of interest earned from stocks plus the amount of interest earned from bonds equals the total amount of interest earned. So again, we've got uh, decimals. At most, we've got two digits after the decimal point, so we're going to multiply everything by 100. So now we're dealing with 6x plus 9 times the quantity 2x equals 168,000. Keep doing math. We get 6x plus 18x equals 168,000. We get 24x equals 168,000, divide both sides by 24, and luckily for us, 24 goes evenly into 168 seven times. So we tack on three extra zeros. So x represents stocks. So how we write our answer is we say $7,000 in stocks, or you could say stocks equals $7,000. In order to figure out bonds, we plug into the equation. So we get 2 times 7,000 equals 14,000. So we have $14,000 in bonds. Okay, so that's answer one. Next we've got, from number 11 from the page, Jerry has invested 8,000, or has $8,000 invested. Part at 7%. And the remainder at 8.5 annual interest. So again, that annual just tells you once a year. His interest income, so that's pretty obvious what they're talking about, what he makes off of interest. Income is what you make. Is $605 a year. So every year he leaves it in, he gets another $605. How much... Does he uh, have invested at E-Trade? Okay. So we've got um, no stocks, no bonds, but money that's being invested at two different rates. So that's why I label them in my chart. Money at 7% money at eight and a half percent and then we have a total we have P R T I and let's see so seven percent that's easy becomes point zero seven time again is oops change colors here. Sorry guys. I don't need to, but it's a lot more fun. So 7% is written as 0 .07 and then um, it's for one year and we don't know how much he's invested so I'm going to call him X. So the interest he would earn would be 0 .07X. Now the next guy, we have a little bit of work to do. First off, we take eight and a half percent and we change it from uh, a fraction to a decimal. Then we move the decimal left twice. So we get 0 0.085, and again, it's for a year. And we don't know how much he is, but he can't be the same as it was for 7% because then they would have said that to us. So we're gonna use different variable. That's the way I'm gonna do it. And lastly, what do we have here? We were told he invested $8,000, so that's the total amount of investment, and he gets a total of $605 each year. All right, so we've got two places for equations. 
under the principal, x plus y equals 8,000, and under interest, 0.07x plus 0.085y equals 605. So the right equation, I want to get rid of decimals, and this time I have a number three digits after the decimal point, so I have to multiply by the power of 10 with three zeros, which is 1,000. That's going to give me 70x plus 85y equals 605,000. So a couple choices in how I solve a system. I can uh, take that equation x plus y equals 8,000, and I can um, solve for one of the variables and use substitution, or I can multiply that equation by something in order to um, get a match. And what I'm going to do is, anytime I have a coefficient on one of the equations uh, that ends in zero, it's an easy number to multiply by. So I'm actually going to come and multiply everything by not 70, but by negative 70, because remember I need the signs to be opposite. All right, so this guy now is negative 70x minus 70y equals negative 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, or, 5, or 560,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that equation underneath my first equation. Or, nah, let's bring them back over here. Line them up. And I'm going to put them up on top. Since the signs are different, I'm going to have to subtract them. And when I add the two equations together, the x's eliminate. I get a positive 15y equals 0, 0, 0. 5 take away 0 is 5, and then a little renaming. Divide both sides by 15. And I get y equals 3,000. So for my answer, first part, I get $3,000, and y was at 8.5%. Okay, now I'm going to take that answer and plug it back into either of the original equations. This is the easier one. and I get x equals 5,000. So that represents $5,000 at the 7%. And there you go. Okay, the last one, we're going to have to do a little bit more work when it comes to the translation. So it says an investment fund. Most of your parents who do investing have an investment fund, so your money's being invested in multiple ways. Has $3,000 more invested in stocks. Well, we're back to stocks. That pay. 10% annual interest than in bonds that pay uh, 7% annual interest. The annual interest on the stocks oops, is $570 more than the interest on the bonds.
Find the amount invested. in stocks and in bonds. Okay, so again, we're going to have stocks and bonds. And total. P R T Actually, let's make this different. T is very small. And I. Okay. So stocks pay 10% or 0.1, and then we're annual. And it says that there's more invested in stocks than in bonds. So I know it's super split up, but you've got that switcher phrase. So whoever's mentioned last, which happens to be bonds, he's going to be X. So let's get him in there. And we need him in order to do stocks, which are going to be $3,000 more than that. So the interest is 0.1 times the X plus 3,000. Now, going back to bonds, its interest is 7%, which is 0 0.07, again, annual, so we have 0 0.07X. And then, when I'm looking at this, it talks about not a total amount invested, so we've got nothing to put there. And then the 570 is not a total amount of interest earned. It's like a balancing so that I can set these two guys equal to each other. Okay? So there's no there. So the 570 is going to be part of the translation. But I am going to be using these guys into my equation because they represent the amount of interest earned for each of them. So it says the annual interest in the stocks. So that's going to be the... 0.1 times the quantity x plus 3,000 is equals $570 more than, that's that switcher phrase, the amount on the bonds. That's that 0.07x. So let's get rid of decimals. We're going to multiply everything by the 100 to go over the two digits. And now we have 10 times the quantity x plus 3,000 equals 7x, 7, yeah, 7x plus 57,000. Distributing, I get 10x plus 30,000 equals 7x plus 57,000. So I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides to get the x's together. Subtract 3,000, or 30,000, excuse me, from both sides to get the constants together. That gives me 3x equals 27,000. Dividing by 3, we get x equals 9,000. So x goes with bonds. So here's a second way to write this answer. You just say bonds equals $9,000. And then to figure out stocks, we're going to take him and plug him into this equation. So 9,000 plus 3,000 equals 12,000. So we say stocks equals, and once I get to a five-digit number, I do need to include that comma. And there you go. All right, good luck with these.